Shane Walton here with the University of Ultrasonics in Houston. A couple of months ago, I made a, uh, a video and a post in which I uh, took a look at an HTHA sample with uh, conventional phased array, conventional TFM, and also phase coherence imaging. And we uh, just took a look at uh, uh, the quality of the imaging that I got from the different techniques. And I, I think that phase coherence imaging proved to be the winner of that battle. Um, I'll actually put a link to that video here so you can go back and find it if you want to watch it. Um, the video uh, uh, garnered a lot of attention and we had a really lively discussion on LinkedIn regarding uh, color palettes and a variety of different things. Um, so uh, th that was fun, really. That, that, that brought a lot of interest uh, to my business here at the school and I appreciate that. Um, I've been meaning to do a follow-up in which we looked at some standard weld samples and some standard welding defects. And I figured today would be a good time to do that. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, stay tuned and let's level up those UT skills. Okay, so the first indication that we're gonna look at, and let me start off by saying, I've loaded the phase coherence imaging color palette, the standard PCI color palette, but I am in uh, conventional TFM mode. That's something that we can call delay and sum. And I've got access to turn you know, the gain up and down, obviously. This is basic TFM. And the first indication that I'm gonna look at will be uh, a lack of fusion, obviously, right? So what do we know about a lack of fusion indication? If we hit it with any sort of perpendicularity, we get a nice high amplitude signal, a good specular reflection uh, coming off the surface of this flaw, and we get a really high amplitude signal. So out of most of the welding defects that we look at, this is typically gonna be the highest amplitude. So if I bring the gain down, and I'm gonna get a very clean uh, baseline here, right? I don't need much help finding a lack of fusion indication. I, I don't really need uh, but really uh, PCI or TFM. I mean, this is the easiest indication to find. And again, bringing the gain down is gonna bring down the noise and everything else, right? To get this on screen. So let's see how this one would look with phase coherence. So phase coherence is gonna be amplitude free. It's gonna be independent of any gain. It's just based on your voltage. And so if I come here, and I look at this highest energy response that I'm getting. This is really not gonna be more amplitude. This is just gonna be uh, more coherence right here. So I've got you know almost 70% of all my elementary A scans and I am running full matrix capture here. Um, about 70% of my elementary A scans are showing uh, coherence right here on the edge of this flaw. So I've got a nice, nice bright signal and if I were to uh, maybe put a reference cursor here and uh, maybe put a reference cursor down here in this grass, uh, you know, one of them is about, uh, we'll say about, you know, at about 70% and the other one's down there at about 5%. So you can, you know, we can figure out the uh, signal to noise ratio there. But what I want to show you is this. Right now I'm using full matrix. If I were to use a sparse matrix, uh, say something really steep like a one and eight, what this means is uh, we're only gonna fire every eighth element out of the 64 element aperture. Um, PCI benefits from having more sources, more elementary A scans for the statistical analysis. So by me reducing this um, uh, to one and eight, uh, you know, I'm going from 4,096 elementary A scans to uh, 512 elementary A scans. So I've got fewer sources to do the statistical analysis. My maximum coherence is, is you know, roughly close to the same ballpark. But look at this. The noise floor has increased. So when I do this, now I'm looking at about a, uh, you know, I'm looking at a much worse signal to noise ratio here. So about 70% for my maximum, maybe a little higher and uh, about 9% uh, for my noise floor here, right? So the signal to noise got worse when I had fewer sources. Sparse array or plane wave imaging, let's say with plane wave imaging, if I'm firing um, eight 
focal laws and then I'm receiving with uh, 64 elements, that's going to give me this same 512 uh, overall elementary A scans and your signal to noise is going to get worse. So you get a better signal to noise with full matrix capture than you do with any of the techniques that involve collecting fewer elementary A scans. And so that's pretty obvious. Again, PCI needs more information for the statistical analysis. And now we're going to go look at the porosity indication. Okay, so we're going to move forward. And at that same gain level, they gave me a really good signal. And, and I'm back to conventional TFM now, right? So the same gain level that gave me a great indication with very low noise on my A scan, on the lack of fusion, let's go find the porosity. Well, if you're not paying attention, you might miss it. So I need to actually crank the gain up. The per ooh, I went too far. The porosity indication is right here. And there's actually a, a bit of a banger if I get my probe just right. But, you know, this is a man-made porosity, obviously. But here's my porosity indication. And for me to really see it, obviously, I've got to turn the gain up. So what I'm doing right now, I'm uh, twisting and skewing my probe to kind of bring up uh, different pieces of that porosity. And, uh, you know, right there where my cursor is, if I uh, set my data cursor, say right there, and turn up the gain, you're gonna see that my signal to noise ratio isn't that great. The overall noise that I'm getting around here on the rest of my in view and, and in the vicinity, I had to really crank the gain up to see the porosity indication. And when I crank the gain up, I crank up everything else. So your signal to noise ratio kind of goes away. Let's compare that back with phase coherence imaging. So with PCI, regardless of gain level, I'm able to really see more of those small indications and them compared to the background noise, right? Let me get another uh, kind of instance on the screen here. Compared to the background noise that's there on, on the A scan, but also just on my in view, I really see them well. And as I twist and skew my probe, I mean, look how much more those pop and how much brighter those are versus what I was getting uh, with, with TFM. With TFM, for me to see these, I really had to crank up the gain, you know? If I wanted to really make these brighter, I could adjust this uh, color palette scale. Uh, uh, I've got a really clean signal. So put it on the other side of the weld and we can see a similar type effect. This porosity, just with standard PCI, with the most basic of settings, this porosity lights up. And comparing that with all the stuff around it, uh, obviously this is going to be much better. So I am running a full matrix right now with phase coherence. Uh, let's see what happens when I go to a sparse array. So what I'm going to do is put it in uh, a one in eight sparsity. And you can see when I do that, the background noise increases a pretty good bit. Again, PCI benefits from having more elementary A scans, more sources to do the statistical analysis. I just went from 4,096 elementary A scans to 512 elementary A scans. I divided it by eight, basically. And you can see the signal to noise that I'm getting here, right? I mean, if I bring one cursor down to uh, the, the peak level and I put the other cursor down here in the noise, I mean, you can see my signal to noise ratio uh, between here, I'm at about 50%, and between here, I'm down there at about 6 to uh, almost 10%, right? My signal to noise isn't great when I use fewer elementary A scans. A 1 in 8 sparsity with PCI is going to be kind of like running plane wave imaging, firing 8 focal laws, and then receiving with 64 elements. You're going to get the same number of elementary A scans. But when I go back up to full matrix capture, you're going to obviously see that noise floor has went down significantly. So how much signal to noise you get? Well, it really depends on your reflector, right? If we're talking about, if we're talking about a lack of fusion indication and we're talking about doing uh, traditional TFM, well, obviously 
my signal to noise ratio is going to be great because this is all about reflection, right? So I'd have to bring the gain way down, way down in order to get this thing on the screen. So obviously you get a nice clean dance floor here, but again, going back to phase coherence, phase coherence is going to give you, you know, a better type sort of a tip reflector off this lack of fusion. So while it might make sizing lack of fusion easier, I don't really need face coherence to image these big defects. Where face coherence really comes into play is on the smaller defects like the porosity. The smaller defects like the porosity, PCI is going to really bring them out more and the noise around them is going to be reduced. And especially if you're doing a full matrix, if you're cutting your overall elementary A scans, well, there's fewer sources for the statistical analysis. So yeah, the noise is going to go up a pretty good bit. So again, uh, I think you see it right there. Um, that was just a quick little, little trip down this well to look at those two defects. Uh, I can show a similar type effect with uh, uh, small cracking um, uh, damage mechanisms where the crack is getting really, really, really tight at the termination point and the tips are very small. So I'll try to do another video on that. They both have their strong points and their weak points. Um, you know, one of them is not going to give you the best results in all cases. Uh, PCI definitely benefits from having more elementary A scans, more sources for the statistical analysis. So PCI looks better with full matrix capture. Yes, your scanning speed is going to be a little bit slower, um, but it responds better. So anyway, uh, I hope you guys enjoy the video and get something out of it. Um, take care and we'll see you next time. Yeah.